Exuding elegance and enveloped in alluring golden allure, the prestigious Ferrero Rocher guards one of the most closely guarded secrets in the realm of food. Crafted more than a century ago, this cherished recipe has remained securely within the grasp of a single family for four consecutive generations. The remarkable achievement we witness today can be credited to an Italian visionary who transformed his father's humble bakery into a colossal enterprise worth billions, establishing it as an iconic name in the world of chocolate. This captivating narrative unfolds the story of Michela Ferrero, a true pioneer in his field. Michela Ferrero entered the world in 1925 in the northwestern region of Piedmont, Italy. This charming area, bordered by Switzerland and embraced by the majestic Alps, became the backdrop of his early life. He was raised in the peaceful town of Alba, nestled between Turin and Genoa in southern Piedmont. This region was renowned for its exquisite vineyards, traces of ancient Roman civilization, and architectural gems dating back to the 12th century. It was here in Alba that Pietro, Michele's father, launched a modest bakery fueled by grand aspirations. Pietro, having honed his skills as a pastry chef, was fervently committed to striking the perfect harmony between cocoa and hazelnuts, ingredients he could readily gather locally. This determination bore fruit in his own interpretation of Gianduja, a dense, dark chocolate paste that contributed to Piedmont's reputation as a chocolate hub. Through Pietro's marketing efforts, this recipe, dubbed Pasta Gianduja, elevated from a local treasure to a product beloved across Italy. Neatly packaged in aluminum foil as many loaves to be cut with a knife, Pasta Gianduja was an instant sensation. In the year 1946, Pietro, with the help of his brother Giovanni, established the Ferrero Company. This enterprise took their humble pastry shop and small chocolate business and transformed it into a larger operation. Surprisingly, Pietro's most impactful business move didn't involve the bakery, but occurred when his wife Piera gave birth to their only child, Michele. Growing up in Alba, a quiet, rural town at the time, Michele could never have imagined the transformation that awaited both him and his hometown. He learned the ins and outs of the trade by closely shadowing his father, absorbing valuable knowledge along the way. However, Life dealt him a heartbreaking blow when his father passed away prematurely at the age of 51. Suddenly, Mikel found himself shouldering the responsibility alongside his uncle Giovanni as they navigated the challenges of running a rapidly expanding business. Tragically, fate struck once again when Giovanni also departed, leaving Mikel as the sole captain of the ship, steering the enterprise that showed no signs of slowing down. Pietro, Mikel's father, had a knack for crafting unique confections. More out of need than preference, he turned to hazelnuts, a practical replacement for chocolate, which was challenging to import, especially during the war when Italy found itself isolated from the rest of Europe. Yet it was Pietro's resourcefulness that ignited the spark for a business, a workshop, and a factory to increase output. He could scarcely imagine how his creation, Piasta Gianduja, would evolve once his son assumed control of the company. Mikel stepped into his leadership role with a bold vision. Shifting away from the traditional chocolate bars or fillings, he conjured up the idea of a chocolate spread named Super Crema. This innovation debuted in 1949, a couple of years after Mikel took charge, and it was a hit. Suddenly, chocolate was no longer a luxury item for the average Italian, but an everyday essential. Super Crema nestled in jars on the shelves, neighboring other bread spreads, signaling Mikel's innovative mindset. To promote his product, Mikel commissioned a truck, vibrantly decked out in the company's colors, to journey around Italy, gifting chocolate to delighted children. Mikel had a keen understanding of what his competitors often overlooked. Strategic advertising and marketing could stir up demand. A decade into Mikel's helm, Ferrero had expanded into three additional factories, two of them located outside Italy. His breakthrough came with the German market, where he repurposed old missile factories into candy production factories. Leveraging a post-war infrastructure and a burgeoning craving for candy bars, a trend that started when they were distributed as war rations, Mikel guided Ferrero into immense success. In 1964, Mikel took a bold step, rebranding Super Crema as Nutella. This name merged the English word nut 
with an Italian suffix evoking food names like mozzarella, portabella, and citronella. But it wasn't merely a name shift. Michele, like his father, was on a mission to achieve the ideal balance of ingredients. His dedication resulted in Nutella, an all-new recipe distinct from Super Crema's. It's so top secret that not even media tours are permitted in the factory. The lore even goes that the original recipe was once translated into Arabic and securely locked in an Egyptian vault. Nutella promoted widely, quickly became a favorite among European kids. Mikkel's clever strategy to give the brand international appeal was a resounding success. In 1983, he brought Nutella to the American market and it took the world by storm. But even amidst Nutella's success, Mikkel was far from done. In 1968, he crafted a product exclusively for kids, aptly named Kinder, meaning children in German. With Ferrero's production already reaching Germany, Mikkel was confident in tapping into the local taste buds, and he nailed it. Kinder, more traditional in its confectionery name than Nutella or Ferrero Rocher, won hearts with its distinctive mix of milk chocolate, sugar, milk powder, and cocoa. Over the years, Kinder has launched numerous products, including Kinder Surprise, Kinder Bueno, Kinder Maxi, King Ice Creams, and more, continually targeting the young demographic. Mikkel's genius was not just in his innovative product, but also in his marketing strategy. He kept Ferrero's image pristine and luxurious while rolling out varied products from different markets, each under its own brand name. Over 30 years after stepping into his father's shoes, Mikkel was all set to unleash his crowning achievement. In 1979, Mikkel gifted the world a chocolate delight that would become a worldwide sensation. His inspiration came partly from a spiritual journey. The name Rocher came from a grotto in Lourdes, southern France, where a saint is said to have witnessed a vision of the Virgin Mary. So profound was Mikkel's pilgrimage to the sacred spot, Rocher de Massabiel, that he decided to christen the new chocolate creation Ferrero Rocher, continuing to make his pilgrimages for the rest of his days. The deep-rooted significance of the chocolate is echoed in its clever construction. Ferrero Rocher is crafted from three layers, a completely crunchy hazelnut immersed in Nutella, encased within a wall of shell, drizzled with a coat of chocolate, and topped with a bit of roasted hazelnut. But what makes the candy equally famous is its fourth layer, the packaging. Each Rocher is encased in shimmering gold foil, nestled in a paper cup, and graced with the Ferrero Rocher brand imprint. This packaging bestows a kind of pseudo-luxury image on it, linking it with opulence and indulgence. Its unique packaging has become so iconic that the plastic boxes or displays are intentionally made as clear as possible to showcase the golden wrappings. These chocolates have turned into celebratory staples, with over half of Ferrero Rocher's annual sales happening in the year-end festival season, peaking around Christmas and New Year's Eve, they're now available in a range of different flavors. Mikkel was relentless in his global expansion of sales and production, bringing Ferrero's treats to every corner of the world. He diversified where he sourced raw ingredients and built an empire of eight factories spanning five continents, supplemented by a network of sales offices. Mikkel Ferrero revolutionized his father's modest chocolate business, propelling it to global recognition. He masterfully segmented the company into unique brands, Ferrero Rocher symbolizing elegance and indulgence, Kinder, catering specifically to children, and Nutella, a versatile staple in every pantry. Maintaining political neutrality and limiting sponsorship commitments, the company remained unblemished under Mikkel's keen stewardship. Ferrero never strayed from his roots. He invested in expanding transportation infrastructure to draw a broader workforce and fostered social initiatives that engendered a community deeply connected to the company. Perhaps this approach explains the absence of any worker strikes at the Ferrero factory. After launching Ferrero Rocher, Mikkel inaugurated the Ferrero Foundation in his beloved hometown, Alba. The foundation is a multifunctional hub, complete with a kindergarten, school, bar, workshops, fitness centers, and healthcare facilities, exclusively accessible to employees with over a quarter century of service to the company. The reigns of the Ferrero dynasty remain within the family. After Mikkel's demise, his sons Giovanni and Pietro assumed leadership. As of 2019, the Ferrero Group generated annual revenue exceeding $11 billion, 
In 2018, it further consolidated its market stronghold, acquiring businesses worth $2.8 billion from its primary rival, Nestle. Ferrero, as the world's largest consumer of hazelnuts, amounts to approximately 25% of the global hazelnut production, a critical ingredient in their flagship product. The transformative impact of Mikel Ferrero is most palpable in Alba, his hometown. What once was a predominantly agricultural community now hosts one-fifth of its population as Ferrero employees. The corporate headquarters, nestled in the nearby Turin, governs this global confectionery empire. At his death in 2015, Mikel Ferrero was Italy's wealthiest individual, amassing a fortune of around $20.5 billion attributed to his chocolates by Forbes magazine. A statue in Alba immortalizes his legacy as the undisputed monarch of chocolate.